Yes, it's a warm country. Hopefully, lots of sunshine, lots of big fish. Some of those big fish might be giant tuna. There's something about tuna because not only do they taste great when you cook them fresh, they're also probably, I think they might even be, the hardest fighting fish you can ever catch on a rod and line. But how do you catch them? Well, there's basically two different types of techniques of catching them. One is called trolling, which is basically pulling some lures, some artificial lures along behind the boat. Not to be confused with the word trawling, T-R-A-W-L-I-N-G, which is pulling a net along commercially taking tons. Trolling, T-R-O-L-L-I-N-G, means pulling a lure behind a boat trying to trick a tuna or other species into grabbing that lure. You're basically catching the fish one at a time. And the other way you can catch them is by what we call chumming, cutting up cubes of fish, meat basically, and tossing them into water so you get a non-stop flow of food particles going down through the water column and hopefully that draws the fish in. Now then, you don't need a giant big game boat to catch tuna. Around the world, subsistence fishermen go out in canoes, in dugouts sometimes, and once they get outside the reef to the deeper water, they can catch tuna. This is in tropical and subtropical areas, I hasten to add, not around the British Isles, although we do have the odd bluefin tuna turning up and passing through our coast, generally at speed. Can you blame them with the weather we had? Generally, a good trolling speed for a boat would be around, I'm gonna say, six to eight knots. They will take lures trolled faster, but they'd have to be skipping across the surface. Now, for the benefit of those out there, I'm afraid I'm gonna to have to say, this is gonna be almost all voiceover because the boat was a really wet spray boat. I cannot bring the big camera out, so I had to shoot with a small camera in a waterproof case. Guys, forgive me, it's the best I could do. Let's see if we actually catch anything. Now, one of the species you can catch when you're trolling fast is indeed the wahoo, alleged to be the fastest fish in the ocean and clocked at over 60 miles an hour. They crash the bait and rip it to pieces, or cut it off, or if they do hook up, they depart with a good deal in your line. These run big. They grow at least 150 pounds, maybe larger. An average one, possibly more realistically, 20 pounds. But this one here, took a lure intended for tuna. So it just goes to show, you can also catch a great fighting and a superb eating fish while you're fishing for the tuna. The wahoo is capable of inflicting some serious damage on a bait or another fish. It's hitting at a very high speed when it strikes maybe, I don't know, 20 plus miles an hour, but Here's one I prepared earlier, guys. This is a wahoo head. Just to show you, the configuration of the jaws is totally different to other fish. This bottom jaw is rigid along here. That's rigid, doesn't move at all. But here, the top half, you can see the beak kick up there maybe. Hope you can see that. That there is hinged. So it actually works like a pair of scissors cutting. Bear in mind, it's traveling at 20 to 60 miles an hour when it makes a strike. The hinge cuts with the scissors, and along here, they might look like tiny teeth, but they are absolutely razor-like. Keep your hands well away from them when unhooking them. They're a great eating fish, bang it on the head, then unhook it. Don't go near it while it's live. Let the crewman do the job. These things will take your finger off. To ID the yellowfin tuna is not difficult. It has lots of yellow, bright yellow finlets, as they're called. And the upper and lower fins there, as you can see, as they get bigger, develop into sickle-like shapes. Now let's get back to that battle and see if the angler really is gonna catch a tuna. Low light levels are always good for tuna fishing. They feed hard then. On the way out to the tuna grounds, we hook up a fish. Here is the battle, and the main thing is, you must keep that rod tight. A tuna's fight is relentless. A constant pressure on the rod is what's needed, and when it gets closer to the boat, you'll get a sort of nodding on the rod top as it goes round in what they call the death circle. It gets on one side, and it's digging on its side, fighting literally sideways to where you're pulling. 
you have to maintain that pressure or you'll never ever get the tune up. Short, hard pumps is what gets the fish to the boat. If you're going to go chumming using pieces of uh, fish meat to attract the tuna, you're going to have to find the tuna first. You're going to be looking for birds. You're either going to set up a drift and drift through the area the birds are working, or you're going to put an anchor down, or you might even have a pre-anchor place. Here, the skipper's peeling out the line. He's already thrown a bait over, and he lets yards and yards and yards of line go out there, so it sinks freely, is unhindered, and goes at the same rate as the pieces of chum that he's cutting up there. So these are the chum, he strips them up, cuts them into pieces of, well cubes basically, I suppose it'd be about, sort of around about an inch square cube, and they're thrown over at intervals, you know, just to attract fish to the boat. You can use small strips for the hook bait, or you can use a whole fish. Um, basically, I wouldn't recommend using wire, you know, you want to be using mono, heavy mono traces, maybe 100 pounds, uh, lead or 150 pounds uh, leader for their little pin teeth they've got and then when you throw in that chum out it's basically a question of sitting back and waiting and there back there there's a tuner underneath those birds that's why the birds dropped here you go Kev here is hooked up on a stand-up rod now just check the stand-up rod out because it has a short flexible tip and much more beef in the first let's say three rings and that's what they're designed for stand-up fishing and you've got that constant maintaining pressure on there, short pumps, crank down, keeping moving all the time you can. Tuna fishing is really about hard work. And if that reel wants to empty, boy, you better keep your fingers out of the way because a fast running tuna just melts line off the spool under good drag pressure. Let it run. When it's running, it's shutting its gill plates and it's holding its breath. Your job is to let it run then. As soon as it stops, it's gonna start breathing again. You wanna try and pump it and get it up before it recovers. And it can sometimes recover oxygen faster than you can. So when it's running, it's basically holding its breath and then when it stops is when it's getting its oxygen back into its muscles and trust me plenty of muscles and here we go i think we actually had a double hookup you can see here short half fast pumps get the line on the reel and make sure as you're cranking that you spread the line from side to side level across the, re the reel otherwise you're going to get bunch in the middle and it'll jam on one of the bars or the support bars across the reel Oh dear, looks like Graham's so strong he pulled the hooks on that one. Kev is still battling away there. And you can see the angle on that stand-up rod. Be very careful, it's going around in a circle close to the boat. I mean some of the best scrapping fish you're ever going to catch. Sometimes you'll be fighting a tuna and something else will come along. Yes, look what's left here. This is all we got back from a tuna fight. Yes, the razor gang as they're called in Africa. That's their nickname. Any predator, barracuda, sharks, it could be anything. Wahoo, in this case, barracuda, no. Sharks, yes, almost for sure. Leaving us just the head. Here you can see, I've actually used a piece of tuna meat because I can tell the dark back meat there is come from a piece of a small tuna and they will obviously eat anything that's going through the water. And the skipper just spaces out those bunches of cubes and tries to get his hook bait sinking in amongst, in amongst those, those cubes so the tuna doesn't 
basically see it as an individual piece. It gets so charged up, rushing around, grabbing bait, that it's, it's taking one piece after the other. There you can see the pieces of tuna, the cubes going through the water there, sinking slowly. Obviously, the birds know and can see from up in the sky straight through that water. They see the cubes of meat and they also see the tuna underneath as well. Plus, you can go spinning for them. We're at anchor there. You can see the anchor buoy off the front there, off the bow. And by using popping uh, plugs across the surface, surface popping plugs, while one angler is fishing bait, the other angler could be casting a surface popping plug. The downside of this is, you know, you, you might get the light line bust off by a big line. This fish, by the way, looks like to me an amberjack caught on a deep jig. Now that is a, either a good bait for a shark or an even better bait cubed up for the elephant. Great fighting fish, caught on the jig, a bonus while you're fishing for yellowfins. You can see from the clarity of the water here, though it looks dark from the surface, very, very clear. So this is true blue water fishing in deep water. And obviously the tuna have no trouble in spotting that bait. They must smell it as well, I feel. But once they get into your chum slick, hopefully you should have them there all the time. You're throwing the cubes in. It could be action all the way. The plastic bin liners, by the way, are due to the spray coming over from the side of the boat. Although it's warm, we're in the tropics there, you can still get soaking wet. So we devised a method of cutting a head out of a bin liner bag and a couple of armholes. And it basically, when the boat goes along, the spray comes over, you can keep, well, I'm not going to say dry, relatively dry. Don't be afraid to fish at night because that's a prime time. Tuna will feed right through the hours of darkness. They can still smell that bait. And as well as catching tuna, you've got the chance of giant amberjack like this one I'm holding here. When you put your bait and lure in the water, you have no way of knowing what size fish you could catch. It could be something like this 300 pound yellowfin tuna. Thanks for watching this edition of the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Hit that subscribe button. Remember, it's all free. And don't forget to go and look through our playlist. A lot of people don't realize that. Look through the playlist, try and find either something different that you haven't seen before, or maybe your old favorites, whatever species, we try and cover it if we can. Hit the subscribe button, check the playlist. We'll see you next time on the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Thanks for watching.